Hi guys, I'm Shmi and today I'm visiting BAC, the Briggs Automotive Company, to take a look at the factory and then go for a little drive in the Mono. We're up in Liverpool in England, a British manufacturer making what is basically a race car that can wear number plates and legally be driven on the road. I've had a little drive of one before, but today we'll be able to take a proper look at the ins and outs, where they come from, how they're made, and then go out for a little drive on the road itself. As we enter indoors, we're greeted by the little showroom with a lovely example of the car. And I saw this car at Auto Sport last week, actually, but I'm just going to show you around it now and basically give you a quick intro to what this is. 550 kilos, 315 horsepower from a four-cylinder, 2.5-litre engine built by Mount Hume. The car, as you can see, has a lot of aerodynamic work going on. This one is finished in blue-tinted carbon, which is... Pretty beautiful to look at as well with the custom sort of striping design all around it. It's got carbon fiber wheels, um, ceramic brakes. We'll show you all of this in the factory. A six speed sequential gearbox and effectively a single seat open uh, canopy race car with a number plate. My 17 BAC, the BAC Mono for the road. This is the kind of new version of the car with the newer engine. We'll, we'll talk about the differences as we go around, but I'm gonna head into the factory, find the test driver and uh, racing driver, Mr. Ollie Webb. He's gonna show us a little bit around. In we go. Hi, Ollie, how are you doing? Hey, good, you? Very good, very good, and this looks cool. Yeah, first sure. time, first time coming in here. Yeah, nice small difference to the factory of, uh, let's say, a Jaguar Land Rover down the road, a bit different. Yeah, but definitely, definitely. So where does, where does everything begin in here? So everything starts over here uh, as a chassis and forms, you can see, without any bodywork on at all. And this is, this is car number one, right? This is... Yeah, so this is our first ever car. This is the Gumball car. This is the Carfest car. This is the Goodwood car. This is the... The one that people might have seen. The one that people The one that seen. you basically get to drive a lot. Yes. But you've driven them all. Yes, every, every single car. one in the world, yeah. Test driving every single mono, that's, that's quite, quite fun. So this is what it starts life as. Exactly, yeah. So this is how it starts as a chassis with its boot and crash structure with all its electronics and fuel cell put on. Um, and this is our new wider chassis that all the cars now have. Yeah, a little bit more space for the elbows. Exactly, yeah. They get built up, I think, on spot? Exactly, so they get built up on the spot, the engine goes on, mount tune 2.5 litre, and then gets the fuel and sequential gearbox put on the back, and it gets run up here to check for any leaks. So the first time an engine gets started is right here? Exactly, right here, and it'll get run up, and once it's checked and make sure that's all worked, it'll then move over to bodywork after that. So you have, I guess, this side of the factory for the, the chassis, the engines, and then the cars move that away, I'm exactly, gonna guess. Exactly, yeah, so over here, it then has some of its bodywork put on, full exhaust system will then be put on, in canal and some of the other options. This wood that protects the carbon floor, um, which is what okay. all Formula One and race cars have. Right, didn't know about that. Yeah. I would so have guessed everything was carbon. It, so it keeps it a bit cheaper if in case you crack your carbon, so the ah. customer can <laughs> have a carbon floor if they want. Okay. But we suggest this. Well, and given the nature of the car, it's quite nice, I guess, to, to follow the, the motorsport inspired theme. And Exactly. And continue yeah. down that line. I like seeing the exhaust system so open like this. Yeah, so this is the way uh, that's one designed. Of our top end ones with the, with the full ink canal system, it's quite nicely designed. Uh, okay. And everything radiators, wiring. There's quite a lot to, lot to take in. Fluid yeah, reservoirs when at the front. You see it with all its uh, kind of exterior shell off in the nude. Okay. And then it, it gains some panels. It does, yeah. So every single panel now is, is fully carbon fiber. Um, it'll have all its radiators put on fully. Um, it'll then be fitted for bodywork before it's then mm -hmm. what we call the top main piece bodywork goes on. Which are the bright coloured pieces we can see around the showroom. And, and I like the, uh, the tag on the forklift. Yeah, I think the good thing is there's only a few of us in here, so that you can't get away with that at a big factory. You can get away with it. <laughs> so panels just being prepared to, for fitment to a car, I guess? Exactly, or? yeah. So one will move over onto that jig soon. Um, that's a panel off car two, second car ever, which is uh, over at Ascari. Come back for refits. So th and this is what we call a seat, fit a seat fitting chassis, which is okay. where you come in. Um, and if you want one of the options to, to have it moulded to your body and your steering wheel moulded to your fingers, then you can get that done here. Right, okay, so customers literally come, sit in here, have their seat personalised. Yeah, exactly. And it's the same guys that do the Formula One driver's seats in our Le Mans 24 hour seats are the same guys who will come in here and get you fitted in here before it goes away for Fair stitching. to say they know what they're doing then. Yes. So the cars move 
along. Yeah, and then I guess around here. And then, yeah, once they come off here and they get prepped before I take them for tests, this is when you <laughs> see them in almost their final form. With so, the, the top body on and the, yeah, you see the exactly. boot lining going in. There you go, boot lining's going in now. Uh, this is one of our custom seats stitched, so custom stitching, custom logos, and the headrest, custom body, everything. And the steering wheel as well. Yeah, I'll get you a, a standard one. Oh, okay. <laughs> come round. That's a, a standard wheel, obviously it's got the custom stitching on to match the car, but that's basically a standard rim. Yeah, very standard. Uh, I mean, <laughs> quite weighty too. Yeah, yeah. All the electronics in there. Then I can swap you oh. for that one. Uh, okay, I can see that's a little bit more customised. <laughs> Carbon fibre, grip handles. So exactly. that's for the customer, that's custom made for the customer. Custom made for the customer to his hand grips, his logos in the side. And then yeah, carbon rim. Yeah, yes. That's nice. The sequential gearbox. Yeah. And then obviously one of the other options are we have the fact that the brakes can be fully carbon fibre, mm -hmm. which is 2.5 kilograms lighter a corner, so 10, 10 kilos all round. On the outside. And then these carbon rims. The, the Dimag rims, yeah, spot those outside. Save even more weight on exactly. the car. Exactly, another one and a half. So um, rotating mass on the outside makes it a lot better around the track. We actually sure. found two and a half seconds just around Alton Park, our lo local track with these changes. Really? Huge just from amount. the Just the from the weight. Wow. Yeah. Um, Stopping car I mean, was only a small part of it as well. I think, I guess one of the, the crazy things is from this car, the first car with the 2.3 litre Cosworth, 650 kilos, right? Yeah. So 100 kilos has already come out of this car into the, the newer cars being built. And you can take out even more with even more options. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So Bonnet it's... being closed. Wow, so what a, what a job getting to drive all of these, hey? Yeah, it's good fun, yeah. So every okay. single one we take to the airport in Liverpool. Yeah. We bed in the brakes and then we do 60 road miles. And then if it all it's all good, off it goes to Japan or America or... Wherever in the world they're headed. Bradford or wherever. Amazing. Well, this has been quite exciting. I think one of, one of the, the cool things for me is seeing such a small personal uh, company. It's, it feels like everybody... You can see everything, you can see the care that goes into each thing and there's a bit, there's already a little bit of a camaraderie yeah. uh, going on around here. Yeah, it's, it's, kind of, it's nice because you, you, get, you get these moving um, kind of assembly lines like with Ferrari and Porsche and Tegelandros they are amazing at what they do and they make a car every 67 seconds down yeah. the road. Whereas we're three a month, so the car yeah, stays yeah, still yeah. and we work around. And you know every car by number, you know that car, you probably know who owns it, yeah, everything exactly. about it. Well, this was a nice little look, thank you very much. No problem. After taking a look around then, we're now going to head to another location where there is a mono that I can take for a little test drive. So we'll be able to take a look around it in a little bit more detail first. We've got to head off to go find the car. This is the car that I am going to be driving then. It's been on display here at the Land Rover Experience Centre at Halewood um, as part of an event that's been going on. But I'm going to be taking it out and driving this back towards base. So it's wrapped in the red with the Union Jack, which feels quite appropriately British. It's got the 2.5 litre engine. This is one of the newer cars, so the 550 kilo car with 315 horsepower. I've driven one very briefly before on track at Anglesey, but this is going to be out on the road, proper experience, well, to see what it's like. This is with the standard non-fitted seat, of course, so it's got the sort of carbon shell um, around a couple of bits of padding. Basically sat very deep and very straight. The, uh, obviously driving, using the sequential paddles on the back of the wheel, which you remove to get in and out. I've got to work out what all of these different buttons do. I mean, lights, indicators, um, neutral. <laughs> the horn up there as well. I like how there's this little windshield, just to divert the air up. And then you've got the scoop right above your head, behind the helmet, which is obviously going to be sucking in the noise uh, of air over the head into the engine as well. Well, it's just looking around the thing that I think is so awesome because of how it's developed for uh, maximum, well, maximum driving experience, efficiency of airflow over the car. And you've got the sort of bits where you can see through see the suspension through there as well. So, we're gonna take the car outside, and then it will be drive time. With the car outside, I'm gonna try and jump in while holding the camera, which is not the most sensible thing I've ever done. Stand on the seat. Yep, straight in, no problem. Stand in, slide down. Oh, blow in. Squeeze the knee in. I'll grab the belts. There There's one. There's two. Gosh, this is snug. 
Ollie is very kindly belting me in right now. Yeah, mechanics get very friendly with their drivers because they go nice and low <laughs> down there. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Wheel on. So. So isolator in. So battery is now active. One press on the screen. Finds the fuel pump, turns the electronics on, speaks to the ECU. Basically your first key of your ignition. Mm -hmm. Revs, all your temperatures, fuel, miles, time, gear. Easy. Easy. All these in the middle are track functions, so we don't need to worry about those today. Mm -hmm. Things that you need to think about on a road car, indicators, indicators. lights, horn, some of these which hopefully we won't need today, the hazards. Yep. Um, and then getting in and out of gear. So once we turn the engine on, you'll be holding neutral up on the paddle. Yep. And then it's just up, 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 down, 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 like a normal, mm -hmm. like a Ferrari. Into neutral, just put one press. Exactly, one press only from first. Okay. Or if you hit the lights, just stay in with the clutch down in first gear. Hit the lights. So you do have a clutch to pull away. Yep. Clutch down, into neutral, up on the paddle. So Same clutch for reverse. To pull away, but not between gears. Not between gears. Um, you can in slow town driving. It's sometimes more comfortable. First Doesn't to second. Fun. Yeah, first to second, and then after that, just flat shifting. Okay. So to turn it on, if you press the clutch and the brake, and, and then press button. and hold that. Yeah. And we're into live. And away we go. So I'm following Ollie. So he can guide me at least on the roads that I don't know around here. Let's be super careful because it is a bit wet and sticky. Where's the indicator? There we go. Sorry, I'm at wet and slippy, of course. This car is suited to roads when it is sticky. What a view! What a view! You're just looking in the door mirrors or the rear view side mirrors. I don't know what you call them. You can see through the wing. Whoa. How does this have number plates on? I feel like I should be completely on a racetrack. I mean, it's Formula 3 race car inspired. It's cosy and sat really, really straight. But obviously I've got an undisturbed view out of the front, apart from my own camera that I put facing at me. The shifts are quick. Down to first, going past the cyclist who's like, what on earth are you doing? <laughs> I feel like if you wanted to get attention driving a car, this is probably the way to do it. What? Just gentle, very, very sensitive pedals. You'd expect that, race car experience. The gearbox is basically a Formula 3 car gearbox. Down to first. Not touching the bumps though, which is nice. A bit more usable than I might have thought. And I've got my bag in the front as well. A little bit of storage. Uh, but let's definitely uh, wiggle over this bigger bump, just in case. We're up. That worked. Okay. Hope you can hear me all right. Big fingers crossed on this one. Borrowed a cable to stick in because I wasn't planning on coming here today. Last minute arrangement, but a very, very, very nice last minute arrangement. To drive the mono. Goodness, I feel like I should be on a racetrack. We're driving on the road. I love how much of the wheel position you can see. Obviously, you know, you just feel like you can apex any corner. Very tight and snug in here. As it should be, of course, because race car. Let's not use any throttle while we're cornering, though. Cold tyres. Even at 50, I can feel the sort of forces on my neck from the wind because you're so open to the air. It's like zero degrees, maybe one degree today. So not the uh, best conditions to take such a car out for a drive, but it's not uncomfortable at all. If it was raining, it would probably be pretty horrendous, but fortunately it's not. Okay, so thoughts so far. One, 
what am I driving? Two, what am I driving? And three, what am I actually driving? This is a race car, but I'm driving it on the road. Does not compute at all. Um, I really want to drive this properly on a track now that I know so much more than I did when I drove it 18 months ago. We've got a selfie in front. <laughs> oh boy. Wow. Let's take a quick moment to try and be a little bit technical about this. Firstly, you've got the central seating position that gives you this most amazing view and feel for where you are. You can see the corners of the car and you're bang in the middle of the road. Then you've got the fact that it feels so light yet so rigid because it's all carbon fiber. It's a solid, solid, solid machine. You feel everything. But you know what? Given we're driving over bumpy country roads, I don't actually think it's as bad as I thought it might have been. So after number two, the third thing, you've just got the whole sense of occasion and drama that comes with it because you don't expect to see something like this on the road being driven day to day it just feels like oh my gosh what am i driving and that's something that you just really really want out of a car that is supposed to be special imagine what this is like when you get it to a track so i'm being super super cautious with speed bumps i don't think i need to be this cautious Or even just doing a gentle pull away at first. You feel the shakes going through you, the rawness, the bare bones sort of <laughs> motorsport. I don't know how to describe it. I've not driven something like this on the road, but <laughs> it's so, so good. I would be tempted by one of these. Genuinely, I would be tempted by something like this. And all I've done is a couple of miles of gentle road driving. Out onto the country lanes. slow speeds spectacularly fun and just exciting and different and out there and abnormal and sometimes that's exactly what you want like I didn't I didn't really think that this would be so easy to use out on a road and just to drive I mean yeah you're only going to use it when the weather's nice obviously well I mean today's okay but you're not going to drive it in a downpour or you'll be rather soaked but you can drive it to your track day with your stuff in the front and then do your track day and drive it home and probably have pretty much a sort of full-on race experience while you're there thanks to an awful lot of power, a brilliant setup and just an amazing amount of experience that comes from driving this car sadly we are returning to base oh, I'm gonna miss that kick this has been incredible I like an awful awful lot here we are then back at base and random thing while I'm thinking about it, the newer ones of these have things now like launch control, traction control, they have buttons on the back of the steering wheel to do it. But, this adventure is going to come to an end, so let's take it inside. Sadly, I'm going to have to say goodbye, but what a drive. This has been insane. We're back and inside then and I've had a moment to kind of reflect on driving the car and what a lot of fun that was. Um, we've made it a little bit dirty in the process, naturally. Airflow goes all the way through here and made a complete mess of my cameras as well. So I hope that actually came out okay um, on the video. But this thing has just been awesome, awesome fun. And while I'm here, I'm actually going to quickly just point out this. Studded tyres because they're taking the BAC to do an ice driving experience. Imagine what that would be like in this, out on a frozen lake. Probably an insane amount of fun. It's very snug in here, that's for sure. The elbow room, um, there's not loads of it around, but you do feel so connected and involved in everything that is going on with the thing and just the drama of it. So next on the agenda is very definitely to take this car or a car out and have a go on the race circuit. That is where it really belongs. Even though it's got number plates on it, it is a race car 
for the road. So fingers crossed that can happen down the line. But thank you very much for watching. Thank you to BAC for having me to have a look around the factory earlier, well, where we are right now. And a big thanks to, to Ollie as well for coming along and taking part and joining in as well. So I'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much also to you guys for watching. That is it for now. I'll catch you soon. Cheers.